Alrighty. Now I just wait for the delay. All right, there we go. Okay. So happy Wednesday. Excuse me. We normally do these on Tuesdays, but to this week I had to do it on Wednesday. It's um family stuff going on this week. Sarah's finishing classes, that sort of thing. So I had to push it off to today. Now we just gotta wait for people to show. I used to just start this and have a little sign so that it will start soon, but so we shall see where anyone is. Everything looks good, so just gotta wait for you guys all to show up so we can get started. I don't want to talk too much about too many things. Hopefully nobody's oh now we got some people. Nobody's nobody's talking in the chat though. So uh hope everybody's having a great week so far. This is um it's hot here in Seattle we get usually before um, July ish mid July is yet when summer really starts but usually sometime in June okay supposedly they are talking in the chat but you're not chatting where I am so I'm gonna go here Joyce telling me they're talking in the chat. I have no chat. Okay, you guys can see me and he hear me, but I don't have a chat. So let me refresh and see if that helps with the chat. I don't have a chat delay, Joy. I've been on for two and a half minutes, so it should be showing. Okay, there it goes. All right, I just needed to refresh. All right, I just was seeing nothing. So, all righty. So, yeah, I just guess I just needed to refresh just like sometimes you guys need to. So, anyway, so today we are going to be continuing on with the um, part of the album that goes along with the pirate ship. And the uh, what we're going to be working on today is the box. Um, and the box will hold the album and it will also... Um, the ship can then sit on top of it and it's going to look like the crates that are um, that are on these old sailing ships and pirate ships back from the day. Um, it seemed to, uh, I, I really got hung up on it being more of a, <coughs> excuse me, a treasure chest type of thing, but that's just been done <laughs> for zillions of years. Um, to go along with the, that kind of pirate theme. And I'm not wanting it to be kind of that traditional pirate theme. So this seemed to be uh, much more fitting for what we um, are kind of wanting this to look like. So, um, I'll, and I'll be showing that when I switch the camera um, over. So, uh, <laughs> treasure chest is old. <laughs> well, I just mean that it's been... I, I just want to do something different than the expected. It's not so much that it's old. It's just, it's expected. And I wanted to do something that was a little bit um, different. So this will hold the, the album. It, you can also choose to make this album without it being to go along with the pirate ship. So um, this box can be used for this album. It can also be used for other albums. Um, and it can be decorated in such a way that it's not so obviously... Um, a crate kind of thing so um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch cameras so that we can then I can show you that the box 
<coughs> so, all right. This um, is a super simple box, and it just has a slide off top so that the album then will fit down inside, and then you'll be able to just slide that back on. Now, I have put the supply list and cutting guide, and I just realized as I'm looking at this, I have, my, I have it as four, and it needs to be six of something. So I'll go in and revise that supply list and cutting guide. Um, but the supply list and cutting guide, as well as the um, page construction videos, are up um, on the website. The pattern for this album is also, for those who want it a la carte, is also up. It is called the Rising Tide album. We did the first page of it um, at our last class. It's got flaps on it. And whoops, this one. And I'm still finishing up the last of the um, um d -d 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 uh, Okay, I hate. Do you, does anybody else have this problem as you get older? How your brain just kind of totally shuts off. It's like the little guy that runs around inside your head, pulling stuff out of the file cabinet and feeding it to your mouth, kind of like sleeps on the job. So that would be the journal cards. Um, so and then it flips over. It is a top bound, so it'll flip vertically and not horizontally. Though this one could easily be made horizontally because you could just leave this side open and attach the top. And so it could be this way. You just have to flip things around on the, the back side. Um, but it's, so it's got pockets, it's got a flap with pockets. So this was what we did during the first class for this. Um, there will be five pages. All the pages are the same. Um, during the next class, I'll have all the pages I'll put together and I'll show you how I'm going to bind it um, during the next class. But I did want to get the box construction um, out of the way. I always have a clean desk. Um, yeah, well, you should see in the peripheral outside of the camera range, it's not so tidy because I basically just kind of sweep it off <laughs> sometimes onto the floor um, so that and then I tend to keep whatever's behind me a little tidy though I have to figure out how to make this work better with the window behind me because it causes a lot of glare behind me when but it's like well maybe then you can't see me as well which would be great <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway so with this box the the um, the cutting for the box is on the supply list and cutting guide. Those who have purchased the um, pirate ship kit, the shippable kit, those who purchased the pirate ship digital kit, which um, at the last class there was some, it, it was there was some hangups with that. It's now up and available, and it includes the pattern for the pirate ship, the pattern for the box and album, and the papers, the pieces of eight digital papers, as does. The shippable kit and then it it has all the rest of the goodies in that as well anybody who's already received their pirate ship kit if i've added anything to it i will make sure to get those along to you um also the rising tide album is now up a la carte which includes the supply list and cutting guide the video tutorial for the pages um, and what we've done so far and i will be adding this box into that as well um, though the box will also be available um, just for general viewing as well because uh, I'm just going to walk you through how it's constructed and then we'll start papering that um, and then it also includes how to construct the um, the pirate ship is a separate pattern you can also buy the a la carte pirate ship that just tells you how to construct the pirate ship and then the rising tide album is separate from that um, so either the electronic kit or the shippable kit both have um, both patterns in them. So um, <coughs> actually my floor is actually pretty tidy, Joy, so the mess is not on the floor today. And I even vacuumed before we went um, 
on our little vacation up to Canada, but it needs to be vacuumed again. So <laughs> it's it's just a hot mess. So anyway, um, so the cutting for this box is on that supply list and cutting guide. It also gives you the supplies and cutting for the page and the video tutorial for the page construction is now up in the page tutorials for those who have either the shippable kit, the digital kit, or if you purchase the Rising Tide album. With updates to the website and all that kind of thing, things were a little bit different setting that all up. So um, if you have any difficulties accessing those videos and you've purchased one of those kits or the pattern, please let me know because things were just a little bit different and I just want to make sure um, that it is um, that it is done correctly. Deborah, if you have, she's asking if you need to purchase the album separately. If you have the shippable kit, if you purchase the shippable kit or you purchase the electronic kit, the album and box pattern and the pirate ship pattern are both included in those kits. If you've just purchased the pirate ship pattern, it does not include the album and it is a separate pattern. I've done that for many years now to where the 3D project and the album are separate patterns because I have people like Lois who don't make the 3D projects because her her um, craft knife is on permanent timeout in the corner so she only makes the albums. So I have for many years now had those patterns separate. So hopefully that answers the questions. There's the shippable kit, which are sold out. There's the electronic kit, which is available, which includes both patterns and the paper collection. There's the pieces of eight paper collection that can be purchased a la carte. The pirate ship pattern can be purchased a la carte. And the Rising Tide album can be purchased a la carte. So there's all those different options. So, um, oh, Deborah, I don't know how you're doing it, but. I've been up since five the last two days and going to bed at midnight because I've been helping Sarah with school stuff. Plus, I've been working on an extra little project that consumed me over the weekend and I, ha I wasn't able to let it go. I'm not ready to show it just yet, but sometimes that's just the way the creative mind works. Plus, I've had some, um, for those of you who are members of Paper Doodles, I've had some other stuff that I'm dealing with and we're just gonna leave that with that. So, um, one thing I need to do real quickly is um, <coughs> I have to print my um, a different wood for the box so I only had one of them printed so let me have two seconds to get that going um, and then we'll continue on Do two of those. All right, so let me just get that going. Okay, so I am not going to actually construct a whole nother box. I'm just going to kind of walk you through how this one is constructed. So you're going to have a bottom piece, two sides, the back, and the front. The front is going to be shorter than the back. The two sides are the same height and the back is the same height as the sides. It's just this one edge which is going to be shorter. So with your construction strips, you're gonna attach your sides to your bottom piece. You're gonna attach the corners also with construction strips at all four corners. We've done this a squillion times here on the show so I'm just gonna, like I said, I think walking through it is gonna be sufficient. You've watched me construct boxes many, many times. All right, so then we also have some narrow um, quarter inch strips. And I, uh, as I said, I realized that I gave you four for each size. And in, in reality, for the longer ones, you need six and the shorter ones, you actually need five and I'll adjust that on the supply list and cutting guide because I forgot I had them doubled um, on the bottom one so what you're going to do is you're going to stack 
And these are just quarter inch strips. So you're of your, your midway chipboard. So you're going to stack two of them together twice for the long side and twice for the short side. So those, those are going to be a stack that are two layers thick. And so you can attach them with glue. You can attach, attach those with score tape, whichever is your preference. Either one's going to work. Okay, let me just ask um, a quick que answer a quick question. Okay, Sally Ann, I may have to make some adjustments on there. That has to do with um, being able to access the. Um, um, so there's there's I've got something turned on that I need to turn off, um, and I can't do it right at the moment. Um, so for those of you who are wanting to purchase just the pattern. Hang tight till after the show, because I'm gonna need to go in and make um, click off some things because it's now it's not letting you um, purchase because I of how I have it set up so that you can access the video the construction video in the pay tutorial. So so yeah. So those of you who are wanting to purchase just the pattern, hang tight, and I'll get that fixed right after the show. <coughs> All right, and that's what the, some of the things that I was concerned about because when they when there's updates to the website, there are certain things that change, and this is the first time I've put one of these up since that update, and it's like things were a little bit different, and so I just needed to make um, make sure. So, alrighty. So again, so we have our double layered pieces, and so we're going to take and put the first one on on one of the ends now you may need to trim off or you will need to trim off um, either the long ones or the short ones so that they fit inside the box and you'll be able to tell how much you need to snip off it's about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch depending on how you you uh, attach them on but if you attach I, ha I kept my my side ones the same length and I cut an eighth of an inch off of my short ones so to start with, I'm going to put one of these double layers of quarter inch strips, attaching them to the short end or the front and lining it up with that edge. I'm then going to take and be lining them up on all the other three sides with that original one. So if you need to mark that on your sides, how far up or down it is so that it lines up with this guy at the front, so see there's one right here and then this just lines up goes all the way around all the way around and this is about three-eighths of an inch down from the top so if you need to mark a line three-eighths inch from the down from the top to place that upper edge of that double stacked one on then you can do that I'm going to then take the quarter inch single strip and that's an attach on the three edges other than the front. So that's going to create a channel that's a little more than a sixteenth of an inch. Because you or close it's kind of between a sixteenth and an eighth, depending on how how close you cut. <laughs> so this quarter inch strip will go lining up with the top edge. The top edge of the second one is three eighths of an inch down. So that will create a channel on three sides. There's only the double stack one on this front edge because that upper part is, is not on this edge to allow for the cover to slip in. And that's just going to slip right into that little channel. Bada bing, bada boom. And it closes up our box. We're gonna be adding some elements on the side. Some diagonal pieces onto the side to make this look more like a crate but then once our album is inside our pirate ship which my one of my sails has come loose can then just sit on top of the crate does that make sense to everybody Oops. 
for those of you new to my site, you can purchase um, any of my patterns and tutorials over on lauradenisondesigns.com. Um, some are written tutorials, some are video tutorials, and it does say in the description if it is a video tutorial. With the video tutorials, they're, um, the videos for those, once your purchase is complete, are under the paid tutorials tab on the website. You click on that and then you'll see a list of all of the um, video tutorials that are in that section. And if you've purchased, it will grant you access to watch those videos. If you have not purchased, you will not be able to view those videos. Um, so that's how it's set up for the video tutorials. For written tutorials, you will receive a file or a link to a file to download. Some people have problems with their email losing that link or it goes into their junk mail or they can't find it or something happens and they're not able to use the link. You can always log into your account on the website and you'll be able to download it from your account page. I also have all of the downloads available to people on a limited number. I don't keep them unlimited. Early on I had someone who decided to share their download link with their nearest and dearest friends and so as a result I've had to limit the number of downloads. However, if you end up using that up, because some people do, some people click the download or they open it on their phone or they open it on an iPad and then don't save it. You really need to open patterns onto a computer so that you can save them. At that point, then if you've run out of them because you don't know where your computer puts them, that sort of thing, you can always contact me and I will add more downloads for you to be able to download. I just don't set it on unlimited because that one bad apple years ago um, kind of wrecked it for everybody else. So for my personal security, I have to limit the number of downloads, but I'm always happy to reset them for you. Um, so electronically delivered downloads for written tutorials, video tutorials are available on my website for you to view. So. That's how I, all of my patterns and such um, work. Um, in the past, Deborah, I would have made an album that fit inside the ship without any problem, because we used to make all sorts of. I'm, I, if you think about like the, the, um, the, one fairy, the autumn fairy house, the album for that was pretty small and it fit inside the tree or the the house that was on the tree stump. Um, but people don't want those small albums these days. People want the bigger albums. So it makes it much more of a challenge for things other than the buildings to um, make it work to have an album that actually fits inside. So unfortunately, I'm having to go with a little less finessed solution by having a box that the project sits on it. Like Genie in the Bottle, it had to sit on a box. This one has to sit on a box. I'm trying to think of others that sit on a box. Or I have it that it stashes back behind the project. Just because everybody seems to want much larger albums than um, used to be kind of the norm. So, um, so you know, in order to make the bigger albums, I have to come up with different solutions for tucking the album inside or with it or some that sort of thing so <coughs> anyway now that I've got kind of gotten the album and the box all completed too um, those of you who have not yet received your pirate ship kits those will be shipping out now that I have all of the pieces and parts that needs to go into it those of you who have already received your kits again I will be any ad added items that I've put onto this will be um, shipped to you as well so Alrighty, so let's just get rolling. Does anybody have any questions as to how this album was constructed? It's super simple. It's a box without a lid 
and then using strips, quarter inch strips of chipboard, I have added it um, to the edges so that it creates a channel that I then have a sliding cover. This is, you know, this is like, this is not an invention type of box. These kinds of boxes have been around forever. <laughs> so, um, uh, anyway. Um, the next thing that I want to do is we're going to cover the outside of it with our wood pattern paper so that on at least one of the sides I can show you how we're going to give it that crate like effect. But see, I've already done a pier, Marcy. I did a pier with the um, with the ferry boat and I did a pier with one of the birdhouses, the July birdhouses. So doing another pier just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's like an old wooden pencil case. Exactly, Deborah. So, alrighty. So I have printed out some of the wood. These are the same woods that we have already used on the um, uh, the ship itself. This is the medium tone and the light tone. So I'm going to use the medium tone for the main part of the box. And actually, I don't know if I want the light tone. I think I want, but I want the darker tone. So. Let me go in and pull that one up too. <laughs> Print those out rather than the light. I think I'm gonna go with the dark, dark wood. There's the one I want. Let me print those out real quick so we'll eliminate those. Oh yeah, I like these better. This dark one's gonna be much better. So it'll have the accent. So let me go ahead and get these trimming up while those are printing. I also just want to make a quick mention. Thank you to everybody over on Paper Doodles for your support. It's greatly appreciated. We have quite a little discussion going on there. I'm not going to discuss further what the content of that is, but I just want to say thank you to everybody for your um, amazing support. I just got really annoyed yesterday, so I had to vent. I will probably go ahead and take that down um, this afternoon, but it felt good to vent it out because it's just something that I've continued to deal with. And it's getting real old, and I'm real tired of it. And there's, you know, I've had just this year alone five or six incidents, and I'm just tired of always staying silent. So I said something. No, oh, it's not printing because I have it on one printer. When I printed these originally, it was back on a different printer, so it doesn't I think it wants to print. Okay, so there we go. Going, why is the printer not cranking up? All right, let me get to where I can see the chat again. There we go. Um, the paper collection used for the album is pieces of eight. These wood papers are part of the... Are you real? I'm sitting here realizing I'm going, these are part of the ship. So the two that I use on this, I will have to add to... Um, hmm... I don't really want to add them to pieces of eight, so um, I'll have to figure something out on that. But these these two wood paper, this is a medium wood, one of the accent woods, and the other one which is coming out now, the dark wood, which I'm going to use for accent, is, these are both in with the ship. But you could use any of the other papers on it as well. I'm just choosing to make it look like wood because of the... I'm using it to set the 
the ship on. <coughs> So, as I said, these two woods are not currently in the pieces of eight, but the pieces of eight are the papers that we used in on the last, when we were doing the page. It's on all thematic for the pirate. With the, the goodies. So, um, but these are in with the, um, the pirate ship itself papers for the pirate ship and currently those are only in the with those who bought either the digital kit or the um, shippable kit so I got to figure out what I want to do on that so no it's different I I don't use the same papers ever on any two collections but there's other woods on other projects so if you have the wood from other projects, you can absolutely use that. There's several projects that I have wood papers in. So if you have one of those and don't have the pirate ship ones, um, by all means, you could use those. But no, I do not duplicate ever um, a paper from one collection to the next. It may look like it's a similar graining, but the color is always different. Um, with the digital papers, I print on cardstock, which is anywhere from 90 to 110 pound weight cardstock. Um, you can print on heavier weight, or you can also print on lighter weight. The beauty of digital is that you can print on whatever weight works best for you to work with. All right, so I'm going to cut these to the the lighter ones to the the height of my. Box. And I'm going to have to splice these because they're not going to fit on there. Actually, I could cut them a little bit shorter, but let's see. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm cutting them across the grain because I want my graining running vertically. I printed three, but I'll probably end up needing more than that. So one, two, three, four, that'll get around, then another one for, I'm just gonna cut a total of six. And then I can use these up on the, the lid. Pepper, you're just so lovey-duffy. So then these are just going to attach around the outside. And I'm just going to work my way around, just folding it around as we go. Um, I'm not wrapping around to the bottom. We're going to be putting some accent strips on there, and I can wrap those around to the bottom. So I think I'm going to glue these because I don't use an awful lot of tape. this one up at the front end. This corner is going to get covered with my accent wood so I don't need to worry about whether it wraps to that edge or not. Okay, so I can put the next one on. I'm going to put glue on each side of the corner as well as all the way around the edge. Wrapping it around the corner. I'm going to have to 
hold it as it wraps around the corner a little bit for a second because uh, when I do with score tape it instantly sticks with the glue it kind of wants to pop up a little bit keep on keep on running around Again, on each side of the corner add some glue on there Pepper has decided she needs out of the room. Just a sec, Pep. Okay, let me let the cat out before she... Come on. No, don't run away from the door. Come on. All of the pets are laying around like they're dying because my house gets so hot in this weather. We're having, as I was talking about when we first started, we're having a stretch of um, heat like we get many times this time of year. We get a, a week at where it's about 90. That's what it's supposed to get today. Um, and we don't have AC in many places, many houses. <laughs> in the Seattle area because this is, you know, we don't get that long of stretches of heat. So uh, I've got my my heat or my AC that I have, one of the floor ACs that I run in my studio. Yes, drop that. Um, so I have that going. So my studio is one of the only cool places in the house. The rest of the house is Toasty. So I most of the time have the pets in here when they figure it out, but I don't think they figured it out yet. So. <laughs> all right, so I've worked my way all the way around to that front edge. Now you don't have to wrap the corners like I did here. These could be cut because as I said, we're going to be adding some accent strips along those edges. And I just realized, well, I have to go in and, and make an adjustment on the supply list and cutting guide. I didn't put the lightweight chipboard on there. That was the accent strip. So I'll add that on too, since I have to go in and add anyway. The beauty of wood type papers is you can just do a vertical seam and it really doesn't show. <laughs> so let's do across the front here. Oh, see in this little little nibbin that I have right there will fit on the end so I still have one left. Perfect. All right, so I need to cut that down to the height. Yes, Lois, you could make this box. It's all straight lines.
gonna check something real quick. Alright, so that's... I don't usually glue on a 3D project, so... Kind of strange. Not having things stuck down quite as firmly as normal. So and then I'm going to run um, my ink around there. One thing, too, that's come up recently on a couple of the shows when we were talking about doing things like mixed media and stuff like that. Um, is that um, distress inks, if you're doing any kind of wet media, they will react with the liquid because they are water-based. So they will react with anything that you are doing that is wet. So as an alternate to using the um, distress, standard distressed ink, standard water-based distressed ink, um, Ranger also has um, the little and they now have these little nifty small size. Uh, the archival ink, which is a permanent and waterproof ink, and it's in the same color as the distresses. So this is my vintage photo, which I use all the time. And you so using the, the same color, but it's just a permanent ink, so that this one will not react with water, and it will, um, so it won't bleed when you do any kind of wet media on top of it. So um, you can get the archival ink if you want it in the same colors as what we have been using for years um, to ink things. So if you're going to be doing any multimedia, wet media with your inks, make sure you're using the archival permanent ink versus, and that's in the distress colors versus the distress ink, which is water-based. I'm just looking at something real quick and it may be able to resolve the the issue that we're having with the pattern if I can do this super quickly that way people can can look at it and If I just guess I may be able to do it by just clicking a button. Yeah, see it's linking with something up weird. Okay. One real quick thing, and then I'll get back to doing this. I just want to, while my brain was on it, because it just popped into my head of how this could potentially work. Sorry about this. Just give me two seconds, and we might be able to have it resolved for those for those who want to just purchase the the pattern itself. 
Okay, so I did. Oh, I see. I, I know what I did now, so I can fix this real quick. Easy fix. I goofed something up. So it's all mine. Just have to wait for it to, to go back. Alright, so edit this one. Of course, the computer's got to run really slow when I'm I'm doing this. So let's try that. So remove that, remove that, and remove that, and update. Okay, it should now be able. You should now be able to go in. Once this finishes updating, you should be able to now purchase those. Just the pattern itself. So once that refreshes, so all right, that gave that a minute to dry. All right, now we. I'm also going to cut some little strips to do on um, the the sides of the channel. I, I don't know if I'll do all of them, but we'll do some of them anyway. So let me cut some quarter inch strips. So now let me go back to that pattern real quick and make sure that that's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to cut quarter inch strips. Cut like ten of them. Be enough. Let's see, five. Six. Seven. Eight. So this is one of those projects to where it's like I can leave this. I'm gonna the, the, this this video is one that's you know available for free viewing, um, and now typically this would just go into video archives. But I can also put this one in my um, leave it here on YouTube as well as have it in, in my archives on the website. Do do y'all like having these even though they're the long? videos and stuff. Do you like having them available on YouTube as well as on my website? Let me just real quick look at this. I'm not seeing the chat at the moment, so oh, look at that. I'm just inking the edges of these so I don't have the white edges. So it looks like you should have no problem now being able to get that pattern. So, all right. So that hopefully that fixed that. So, okay. Well, I'm I'm just you know I I was kind of always a bit of a stickler about it. Um. Just because I show so much personal stuff, but you know, I don't share as much personal anymore. So um, I can leave these up on YouTube as well as over on. It'll be in both places. There may be some that I choose not to leave on YouTube. So okay, the pattern now works. So cool beans. That fixed it. I had some. I had it on restricted which it wasn't supposed to be. Thanks for checking that, Joy. The one nice thing about viewing it over on YouTube is that it is, um, it's, um, got the, the chat. 
and I enable the chat so you can view the chat. Of course, now that I've decided that I pretty much would leave a lot of them here on YouTube, of course, it's, it, it's going to go the way of Ustream in that you'll be limited on the amount you can store here. Just, just, just watch. That will happen. <laughs> For those of you around back in that day when they decided to do that and then Joy and I were frantically downloading three years of videos. Also, um, let's see who somebody sent me a, a um, an email. Um, um, Suda, did I answer your question earlier? Is she still here? She was asking about how to order and register on the website in order to purchase patterns. When you are making your first, you do not register in advance of your first purchase. When you make your first purchase, you will create account an account at that time during the process of that first purchase. You don't need to register before then because everything that is accessible without being registered into the website, um, other than for things that like the, the paid tutorials, which once you have a paid tutorial, you'll have an account and you'll have access to that. Um, prior to that, if you're just visiting the site, um, and viewing videos and stuff you do not have to be unless you're purchasing you do not have to be registered on the website so you there's no need to be registered in advance so you just uh, you just do it during your your um, checkout process Yeah, unfortunately, if it's on YouTube, it'll be more likely to be copied. But you know what? That stuff happens no matter what I do. So it is what it is. I just get tired of staying silent about it all so much of the time. And that's what my issue was yesterday, is I'm just tired of it happening repeatedly and I just swallow and take it and stay silent. I'm just not doing that right now. I think half a dozen in, in less than half a year is um, a little ridiculous. So. Okay, so I'm just adding these strips onto those. I'm adding strips onto the strips. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Deborah. It's not fair. But you know what? Ten years of it. It is what it is. I can't let it stop me. I just had, yesterday I just had to vent. <laughs> Doesn't change what I'm going to do. I'm not going after anybody. Um, every time I've ever even defended myself, I end up being the bad guy. So it's just not worth it. I just stay on my little high road. This is close to jumping off the high road that I think I've ever gotten by just venting about it. But. I think the biggest issue I take with people who who tell me I should take it as a compliment are people who get copied 
should take it as a compliment. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not a compliment. You know, if it's somebody just making something and they're doing it for their own personal use or that sort of thing, like I don't expect people to give me credit when they've bought one of my patterns and make it and they post it. You know, it would be nice, especially those who post every little nitnoid and bit and piece that's in it, but not that they purchase a pattern for it. It's like, at the end of the day, if that if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I don't demand or expect you to have to give me the credit for that. I get bothered by when it's something that I've worked hard. I've done my research because those of you who know me, I research everything before I put it out to make sure that I'm not stepping on somebody's toes. I do my research in advance. And so when other people use the same idea or concept I'm really bothered by it. And somebody said on Paper Doodles, well, maybe it's just, you know, great minds thinking alike. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not coincidence. So. Anyway, enough on that subject. Let's move on. Um, I wasn't going to talk about it and I did. I'm bad. I'm a bad dog. So I'm just working my way around. Putting these little strips on. Um, I eventually will also go ahead and cover the inside of the box using one of the papers, but I'm going to have to print more papers to do that. So for the time being today, I'm just going to do just these little wood strips, but the inside of the box, um, because it gets exposed when you take the album out, I'll probably cover, you know, the inside surfaces. You have to splice some because the papers are only eight by 10, but you know, I don't have any problems doing that. It gives you a creative opportunity. No, I wouldn't say that he copied me on that because those are something, Putt's houses have been around since the 50s, so that's more what those are about, but there's other things that I'm not going to go into in regards to him. Okay, bad cat. Yeah, because my cats are usually, well, well, they both are kind of bad pets. Should I just say instead of bad dog, I'm going to say bad pets. You know, when I was in the quilting industry, we didn't have nearly as much of this issue. And you would think that there would be, but in in paper crafting, it's accepted. Scrap lifting is a thing that's perfectly okay. What people don't quite realize, it's scrap lifting for your own personal use is one thing. It's when you're using it to make a profit is another. Anyway, enough of that. Joy says bad bird. Should I just say bad pet? Instead of bad dog, bad cat, bad bird, we'll just say bad pet. Of these done and then we're going to cut some strips 
of lightweight chipboard and as I said my apologies I'll get that added onto the supply list and cutting guide but then I forgot to put the lightweight stuff on there where are we at for time okay we're good Let's see, where do I have a sheet of lightweight lightweight chipboard? Do I have any lightweight up here? No, probably not. I probably just have the heavy stuff because I want lots of stuff. Here, I found some scrap pieces. Now, I'll probably forget this momentarily, Marcy. <laughs> she says, are we going to start being politically correct with the pets? No, I'll probably still say bad dog. Because usually in my house, it's bad dog or bleep cat. <laughs> so <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut these half inch strips. No, you get the bleep cat when the cat has brought a snake in. That's the only time the snakes are even mentioned in my household is in conjunction with the bleep cat who brought it in. He hasn't brought any in. I think he, he kind of cleared out that nest of them and then the rest of them dispersed. So we haven't had one knock on wood in, uh, in quite some time. Let me cut a couple of them that are longer. I know that little snot cat put up a sale while I was gone. Patches is Sarah's cat. She's the smartest one. She also gets most of the bleep cats. So. I'm going to cut a bunch of these so that I can then use them as I need to. Um, we had a couple of the, we had a couple of zombie snakes here too. The first two he brought in we thought were dead and then we found out that they're no. Oh good lord, we do not put these cats on catnip. They're a handful enough without catnip. <laughs> we'll pass on that. Alrighty. So I'll, I'm just going to basically do a couple of sides, I think. So I'm just going to do top and bottom. We'll see how we're doing for time because I still want to do the, the top too. So Now this is going to be done out of the dark wood and I think I'm gonna cut I want to cut this across I'm gonna cut these lengthwise I think For those of you who've been around for a while, you know all of my pets are quite the little characters. <coughs> and we just don't, we don't get the parade of pets like we used to when my kids were younger. So be thankful for that. Alright, so. It is a long one for this. Yes. And these should fit on 
course they don't. That's right, because they're 10 inches. Durr. Okay, so I'm going to attach these down, and then I'll go ahead and ink them. Because um, I want to ink the chipboard, too. Spiders, I, you know, I'm good with spiders. Sarah completely panics at spiders. In fact, she had a spider in her bathroom yesterday that I had to go take care of. It was up on the ceiling. So thank goodness for Trevor's hockey stick still being around the house. Cause, and most of the time, we do try to rehome them back outside. But this one, he was on the ceiling. He was one of them that I think it might have been a baby wolf spider. So you know what? Um, he's no longer with us. <laughs> he just got to see the butt end of a hockey stick as his last, his last vision. So I may be struck down before killing a spider, but Sarah was quite distraught. So... I just had to get it gone. <laughs> Trying to get him down off the ceiling and capturing him alive was not going to be something that was easy. So. Right, so let's go ahead and ink these. At least we don't have too many seriously nasty bugs here in um, Western Washington. Joy's got all the really gnarly looking massive bugs over there in Hawaii. Oh, you would not handle Hawaii then, Alexa. The roaches in Hawaii are, are pretty significant. <laughs> Okay, so that's that top and bottom edge, so let's go ahead and get those attached out. I'm just, for expedience sake, going to disattach these guys this way. That way they stay flat quickly. Yeah, I don't recall having roaches when I lived in the Bay Area when I was going to school. I had ants one time. That was fun. Um, no roaches. Um, now, one of the things that I could have done and I didn't is I could have made, rather than a, a half-inch strip, I could have made this a one-inch strip, attached it, and then wrapped this around to the bottom. I'm just going to bring it down flush with the bottom edge um, and don't necessarily need to then wrap it. So. Just attach that there. Nope, he learned that one from me, Renee. Okay, so here I'm going to disnotch this piece. See how I've ex it extends beyond there, but I want it to notch. So it notches like that. 
so it's flush with this, but I want it to extend out for when I put a piece along there. Okay, so I'm going to cover one of these shorter ones. Now he used to be a regular here at my show for a, a quite a period of time, Rene. So I'm going to cut these then. Fit. So I need one for each end. Yeah, when Trevor first went down to Arizona, the team owner had to talk to all the boys about making sure you check your shoes and things like that because of the scorpions. All right, so he's talking about scorpion. Lex is talking about scorpions. Yeah, no, I'll pass on scorpions as well as snakes. Thank you very much. It's, it's a little bit long. Oh, now the cat wants back in. She probably went and had something to eat. And so line that up there. And then I'm going to do one in about the center-ish. cat in and then we'll put the dividers on there. Come on. Pepper, you're a smart cat. You, you know, these are lever handles on the doors. You could just reach up and pull that lever down. All right, so now we're going to put the diagonals on. So let me cover. Let's do the short ones. Cover this guy. Hey, Anne Marie. I haven't seen you in a while, sweetheart. Glad to see you. Say hi to Michael for me. One of my faves. Yeah, that was a cat scratching it to get back in the door. Nope, I'm not changing how I do things because it, it's just, it is what it is. I know. I know what I've done and when I've done it. And I know that there are many of you that know as well. And so... I'll just wait for karma to take over, so. 
Anyway, all right, so I've got one of these guys. So now I can take, and I'm gonna place it here on the side, and then I can mark the angle I need to cut it at. Curio, it could have been the curio cabinet. To be honest, I don't recall which project, but it was way back, way back, way back. It could very well have been the curio cabinet, Alexa. I, I to be honest, I don't really remember. Alright, so this is going to go like so, and then we'll do, oops, I need another one. Let's do a couple of them. Oh, the, it was well before the birdhouses. I want to say it was back, I mean it was very early on. I want to say it was like probably sometime in either 2010 or 2011. Trying to remember some of the early, early 3D projects. Might even have been, yeah, it's probably more like 2010. Yeah, Thumbelina House. Yeah, but Thumbelina House was ways in. I'm just kind of looking around and seeing some of the early early stuff is not in my studio here. So the early Tim Holt stuff that I did for his for his booth at CHA in 2000, that was in January 2011. Those were using cons the um, configuration boxes so they didn't really use them. I'm trying to think of what other ones. Birdhouses weren't till 2014, and I know I was using them well before that. Okay, so again, go this corner, this side of this corner, and this side at that corner, and then you can just mark the angles. If they don't match up perfectly, totally fine because these crates weren't constructed that well. <gasps> then if you wanted to you could kind of encrust these and make them kind of more crusty looking but doing that kind of thing or we could also have it go that way if you wanted. So it just depends on which way you want it to crisscross kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think I like it that way. So. Your first bird house was the garden bird house. Yes, that was that was way back, way back. Came to prominence here recently. <laughs> that poor thing has been through the ringer. It's it's been copied several times. <laughs> now, when I say copy, if somebody's made it from my pattern and not given me credit, that's not copying. That's just using my pattern. It's the ones that have 
I've had one lady who put it out as her own pattern. I had somebody want to teach it, but didn't want any, what didn't wanted me to just give her permission to teach it without, you know, she bought just the one. Um, yeah, that one, and then it's the recent incident. It's just been that one's been through the ringer. And then people have have used that that roof type thing since then. Um, and it's like, yeah, no credit given, but. It is what it is, whatever. <laughs> you know, so, all right, so this is going to go across the bottom. It's not quite wide enough, so I'm going to use one of the longer ones. So I got to cut a few more strips. Hexagon box. They did a version of the construction strips with a punch added to it. Yeah, but the uh, construction strips came out before then. You got me curious now. I'll have to go look. Just for my own edification. I'm not going to announce it or anything. Um, no, it was before then. It had to have been before then. Now, some people honestly do give me some credit and, and that sort of thing. Um... I know that Genevieve, who uses my Stack the Deck, constantly gives me credit, and I greatly appreciate that. The lady in England who made dies for my Stack the Deck gave me credit up until she um, put the dies out, and then suddenly it, it had a different name, and they were her design. Um, let's see. Um, there's a, many people who do give credit. And I appreciate that. Um, Susan, that was only after it was brought to their attention, not beforehand. Yeah, Emory, you were one of the you were one of them that had um, had had given me the heads up about the England lady. All right. So then we're covering these guys, and we're gonna do the the front of the box, and I want to show you that how I taking care of that little slot thingy. Other than that, you know, the rest of the sides will all be done the same way, except on the front, I'm just gonna do one angle across and then the two on the sides, but the, cause I wanna get to the, the top. So I wanna make sure we, we do that. So let's cover one more. Uh, it's been a wild ride over the years. Absolutely wild ride. I think my favorite still was being catfished when we all got catfished. That one was the best one. That was years ago. I was watching catfish this today, this morning, on MTV. It was about the only thing that was on when I was up so early. And it just brought back, ah, oh, the memories. That one had to be the weirdest and the wildest. The famous triplets. And I greatly, and Marie, I greatly appreciate it. The mailbox, that was one of my early Graphic 45 projects, and I started with Graphic 45 in, was that 2011 or 2012? Did I use them on the mailbox? 
That might have been. The mailbox, the curio cabinet, the telephone, all of those were some early Graphic 45 stuff. And I think I started with them in, I want to say 2011. Vintage suitcase, yeah, and that was in 2000. Vintage suitcase was in 2011, I think. All right, so these are going to go across the top and the bottom, and I'm going to line up with the other one. Now the bottom one, since I don't see, I don't want it to jog. But though that, oh, actually, it doesn't look bad jogging because it lines up with that guy. Because I was gonna cut a skinny little strip, and I'm like, going, you know what? That actually works. Oh, cool. Then I don't have to trim it to skinny, skinny, winny. That works perfect. Ooh, the fishing tackle box. That was in 2010, and the picnic basket. Both of those were in 2010, I'm pretty sure. Those all, <laughs> this has been, this is funny, tripping down memory lane to figure out when I started doing the construction strips. The fish tackle box and, that would be a good Father's Day one, and, um, and the picnic basket. Those were early, though the picnic basket was after the garden birdhouse because it the top of the picnic basket was also the cover of the album just like the birdhouse was yeah i did a um the curio i actually did three different versions i did the whatever the graphic 45 i want to say that was the the um it was an older collection the curio one but i also did it in a baby version and i did a tropical something or other my brain's dead a tropical something one because I remember it had a parrot oh the the picnic basket was put together using sheets of cardstock okay so that was because I know like the the trunk the original trunk I did it where it had the paper was forming the joints so, I, yeah, I don't recall when I started using the construction strips. I wove strips. Yes, I wove, wove strips of cardstock for the picnic basket. Not about that. Somebody else not... Uh, somebody else also... <laughs> one of our subjects also did wove cardstock not long after that. Ah, the memories. <sighs> okay, so then I can use these little shorter jobbers. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the, I'm just trying to think, I wouldn't be surprised if the vintage mailbox had construction strips in it. I'm looking to see, I thought it was in here. I'll have to look. See, now you've piqued my curiosity. It's like joy. I was trying to find an email yesterday. It was making me crazy. I still haven't had a chance to look for it. I got got sidetracked with something else, Joy, but I will find that. Yeah, the picnic basket. I can see it from where I'm sitting.
Yeah, because prior to construction strips, I would just set it on the cardstock and then we'd make the joints. So. All right, so there's that front edge. The back edge would be done the same way. It's just, you know, at the top and bottom, so this way. So then it will fit out of a short one. So let me cut one more strip, and then, then we'll go ahead and move on to the cover. Oh, the Christmas train. That was ancient, Felicia. Oh, we're so glad to see you back, but... Oh yeah, that was that was early, early. That was two thousand. That probably was Christmas two thousand ten. Was that one? It might have been two thousand eleven, but I bet you it was two thousand and ten. Oh, or it might have been even no. That would have been two thousand nine. That would have been Christmas two thousand nine, and it was done out of envelopes. The train, that very first train, it was out of envelope. Christmas train was out of envelopes. And it, it did an accordion thing. Oh my goodness. I had forgotten about that one. That was, yeah, that would have been, that would have been 2009. Oh, too funny. Tripping down memory lane. Oh, I already covered this one. Well, snoodles. Pop that puppy off. I don't want to waste it. Put this on a different one. Oh, goodness gracious, Marcy, you have files? Marcy said, grab my files. You did two curio cabinets. One was Little Darling. The other was Curiosity Shop. But there was another one that was done with Tropical Travelogue. That was the name of it because it had a parrot on it. I know I did that one, too. That's too funny, Marcy, that you have files. I'm impressed. Yeah, the clocks, the first clock was the mantle clock. And that had the gears on acrylic. The vanity case, yeah, that one was later. All right, so that's gonna go across like that. sewing box the sewing box was part of the sewing box was one of the projects from January 2011 that I did for Tim Holtz booth that was using um, that one was using the um, configuration boxes all right so so you can now see how that and and I I'll do the other two sides that same way but that gives it that crate look it also gives it a lot more sturdiness and stability you have an entire file cabinet dedicated to the projects? Yes, Marcy, I, I'm fully aware that you have been, but oh my goodness, you have an entire file cabinet? You want to come to my house? 
I can pretend I'm one of the twins. You can bring them with. <laughs> All right, so that's going to fit inside just like thusly. So one of the things I can do is put some of those strips but get it all the way in, tucked in, so that I'm not... So I can put those strips on here as well, because that way when I put one of the papers that I'm planning to use, I was thinking this guy. And see, that covers up the excesses. So if I use this ship... So I kind of like the ship. The ship is a possibility for on the top but I also think this one might be good on the cover of the album itself which goes inside let's see um, I kind of like that this one looks kind of cool too uh, ooh no it's the maps it's the map I, why did I suddenly flash back on Dora the Explorer about the map, the map, the map. <laughs> ah, I hadn't seen that in a long time. Okay, so that compass rose could go on there. I think I like the map. Actually, the map would be cool on the inside, too. Because I was going to say this one could go on the inside, but the map would be cool on the inside. I like the map on the inside. I think I'm going to do this one on the outside. And just, I'll print out several of the maps, and I'll put the map on the inside. No, it's the map, the map. I can't sing. Um, but yeah, Dora the Explorer had an animated map. My kids are now 21 and almost 19. Why Dora the Explorer popped into my head is beyond me. But see, I'd be a good, good babysitter, Marcy, when you brought the twins and came and visited me and organized me that well. I know that, um, okay, her name just totally went out of my brain, um, Melissa um, Merritt, I think, um, did a list that's over on Paper Doodles on one of the files. There's a list. I know she's gotten busy. She's doing her own design work and stuff like that these days. Um, but she had a list going of all of the patterns and such. I should pull that up and bring it up to date. I think I'll run a couple strips down just to keep it so it stays flat. Also, in the kits, I don't have one up here with me, but I'm going to get some sort of um, a pull or something like that for, so you have something to grab onto to slide this on and off. The other thing, too, that I was thinking about doing is at the ends, punching some little holes. I can use my crocodile. I think I can still get that on there. Um, to punch some little holes and have some little a little rope handle on each end. Maple Street is all the houses that there's there's been a school in. It started out with the dress shop when um, Couture something Couture came out with Graphic 45. The dress shop and then there was a sports shop and a hotel and the gas station and the bookstore. Um, I'm looking up at them right now. The tea shop. The church, the grandma's house, the, the, what else do we have up there? Confectioner shop. There's still more. I just, you know, I'm trying to get all these backlog caught up and then 
I have something special that's coming up for the Maple Street people soon. No, it's Maple Street, not Main Street. Yeah. So attach that down. Like a saw. I'm going to just ink those edge because I don't want to make it super thick at the edge that goes into the track or the, the channel. So I'm just going to ink that edge before I put down anything else. I will probably cover this side too, but probably not today because we're going to run out of time. Bakery, there's a bakery. Still have a tree house that's going to happen. There's several still that can happen, but I do have something special specifically planned. It's just hours in the day for those um, with Maple Street reservations, as because you've all been so incredibly patient. Not all of you have gotten the last one yet, the pub and the cafe. So let's cover a couple of the long ones. We've got a short one. It's one more short one. So we can cover, cut some more strips. While I love doing the digital paper, it also adds more time to putting a project together. Because <laughs> I gotta do the paper too. But there's so many projects that without doing the digital paper, we wouldn't be able to do because there just isn't the paper available out there. And I love it. It's been a, a new and different creative outlet for me. And I love doing it. I thoroughly have enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, um, uh, Melissa Merritt did it. She updated it. I think the last time that she updated it was probably a couple years ago, though. Because, like I said, I know she's gotten busy doing her own design work and stuff. But she had kept it, especially, I know she did it the first time when we still had the Ing site. Anybody remember the Ing site? So I know she first did it then, but it's, it's under the files and paper doodles. The school locker, yeah, that that was I actually, you know, those school lockers. I still have some of those kits on the shelf from when we did the lockers. That was a fun project too. That one would benefit from being larger. It's fun to kind of go back and go through some of these every once in a while. It's like eh, when I, I, you know, I try to think of which ones I want to revisit. But I only revisit projects if I'm going to modify, change them, enlarge them, do something different. I don't, I typically don't just do what I did before. I don't find that to be interesting or valuable. The vintage camera and the telephone, those are two of my favorites. That's another one that I've seen many people make the bellows and put tags in, into the bellows. It's like, yeah, you're welcome. That one was also for um, CHA 2011 for Tim. I did that. I did the camera. I did the suitcase. No, this the first year it was the suitcase. No, that 2000. That was in January. I did the suitcase, the sewing basket, and the um, the mantle clock. And then that 
for the summer CHA, I did the, the camera, the vintage camera, and I did the um, the one that opened up and it had the tags of the month. I had I had done a tag for every month that hung inside on hangers, and it was a, a um, perpetual calendar. Okay, so the bottom one, I can put it right at the edge after I ink it. Um, I can go right at the edge. Um, the other two, other three, need I need to put it inside the box so that I don't cover over the, so I don't interfere with it going into the channels. The wardrobe trunk. That's what the, the one with the the tag monthly tags. I wasn't the first to do a typewriter and I I stalled on that for quite some time because I didn't want to be perceived as doing something somebody else had done but mine's completely different because my album was the the different keys were on the different steps of the the album itself so mine was a completely different style than the others that were done. Oh, there's there's many pictures, um, Evie, on the internet, on even on his website that you can see. put this one across the bottom to start with. Slip it inside my box. Uh, it's catching because that was a little bit long on this side. It's like, what's it catching on? slips right in. So now I can put on this end. I just have to trim. Those were all the paper applique projects, Alexa. I tuck that in nice and cozy, and then I can put that up against that end. Don't put it too tight, just to give it some breathing room to give it things in and out. So 
then I can take one of these long ones, just down the side. I could see by using this compass rose on the top, I could see going in and it would be kind of tedious work, but I could see going in and doing some stuff with some glossy accents or something on there. Or you can take some little jewels and add some little jewels on here, things like that, and that might be kind of cool. Again, don't go super tight up against that edge but close to it. That gives you a good idea of what this box I, I have those other two edges to do but doing the slat things I realized now I'm gonna have to figure out how to go in and ink that because that's white edge is showing and it's making me crazy so um, this also stabilizes it by having this but you can see how there's a little bit of a reveal edge on all those sides so you just want to make sure you have that the only one it's flush is the bottom edge so then that just slips right in there and your album will then fit inside. Um, again, you can add whatever you want to on this if you want to have some slats, you know, going across. You'd have to piece one, but you could do that going across the top if you wanted to, even with that compass rose on there. Um, so you could totally do that. I kind of like it plain. And then on the inside, like I said, there will be some sort of little um, handle piece in the, the kits. I have to look and see what I've got available. And then on the inside, I'll probably add just some some strips around it, maybe using um, one of the stripes, maybe a dark stripe, on the inside and have um, this. And then I'll, I'll do it the same on the sides. But it'll kind of be framed by some other paper um, on the inside. But I like the map inside there so when you take the album out it shows so um yeah so again i wanted to do something unexpected to go along with the boat um and just remember your your um pirate ship will sit on top of this box so don't get too elaborate <laughs> with the stuff that's um but that's on there. I do have in the kits, I do have some seashells and stuff that you could add um, to this or you can add them on the cover of the album. Now on the next class on Friday, we will be working on the cover because I know people love it when I do the covers. So we'll do the cover and I'll show you how I've decided to bind that. So, but that a little bit different kind of look for um, the, um, rather than a treasure chest, which is, I think, what a lot of people were anticipating um, was going to be what what was for the album for the pirate ship. So um, I hopefully pleasantly surprised you with um, a crate box instead. So um, <sighs> I wasn't going to show something, but I might give you, do you guys all want a little sneaky peek of what I was working on that captured me over the weekend that I just couldn't resist working on. You guys, you guys are all going to say, no, no, I don't want a sneak peek. Not at all. You know, another thing that could be really cute on here is a little loop of leather. You know, it kind of loops this way and attaches. So it's just a little loop. 
and it could be attached with um, a um, a brad and that would be a really easy way to create a pole for that put the ship on top of the box do this without taking out my camera see so it'll just sit on top of the box like so Alexa says yes. Nobody else is saying yes. They want a sneak peek of what I was working on. <laughs> um, as you know, I, I'm, I'm totally, um, totally into wanting to move towards doing um, mixed media and my 3D stuff. So, um, this is a the white pearl or the pink pearl um, it could be considered either a ghost ship I'm thinking of it more as a fairy ship but I'm doing some mixed media stuff on the, I don't know if this isn't going to show on camera very well let me see if I can get the light to shine on it better so you can, uh, this is just not showing up on camera. It's too light and it's too bright. This has got some, a lot of texture. Let's see if I can get it up there. Okay, the light's too much. That's part of the problem. So I don't know if I can get it to focus. Oh, well, you can see it better on the darker. But so it's kind of, I wanted it to look kind of like it was all barnacly <laughs> on there. So I've done endless light tones. This will be available as a digital kit. Um, so it's got all of this on there and then it's going to have, um, I found some really cute, some flowers and it's going to have fairy lights and pearls. I found some really cute flowers that are going to go on it. And then it's got some lace that's going to go on the, the. This is going to go on the sails. The sails are going to be clear, but with some, um, 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 oh, what's it called? Gauze. It's going to have some gauze that goes over because I didn't really want to stiffen the gauze, so I'm just going to use some acetate and just um, put some, use medium to put the gauze on there. And then it's got some fairy lights that will be strung up onto the it, and some, some pearls will string up onto it. Um, and then I'll probably do with the box, I'll do it in the light woods and also do that encrusting on this as well. Um, but you can make it creepy. <laughs> I'm making it more fairy with the soft flowers and stuff. I make it more of a fairy look, but um, it can also be done spooky <laughs> and make it more of a ghost ship if you wanted to do that. But I'm, ca I'm just calling it the pink pearl. I'm thinking more this would be kind of a cute project in like a nursery or something like that um, but I, I'm into doing some stenciling this has got some glittery medium that's on it on top of it um, so it I was just I just had this vision in my head that just wouldn't let go so I had to work on this and it seemed like the time while I was working on the box for the the pirate ship. So hopefully by next class, I'll have um, more of it done. Um, but next class, we will be working here. Let me switch cameras. Um, yeah, the black pearl was one of the pirate ships. That's why I was calling this one the pink pearl. So, <laughs> but you could also the papers in it. Um, the pastelish one, not the white one, but the pastelish one has blue. It has aqua and has pink in it. So if you were making it for like a baby's room, you could lean it to, towards whatever color. Um, but yeah, so that's why I'm calling it pink pearl because the, um, the black pearl. I could also see doing the regular um, pirate ship all mixed media and encrusted, made it, make it look like it's pulled up from the bottom of the sea. So um, I'm, just, I'm just into making everything fairy these days. There's going to be a paper that goes along with it. Um, I have about half of them done already, um, so it, that one 
well, as I said, it'll be available only as a digital kit just because I'm not doing much in the way of kits until I'm, because I just don't want to add any shipping. So, um, but yeah, I was trying to go for a kind of barnacle-y looking, but. So that's kind of the direction some of my 3D stuff are going to go, but I want to make sure that all of my 3D projects for in the future, see my, my window is so flipping bright. Oh, here, I can do that. Oh God, then you can see my mess. Um, but I want to start moving in the direction with some of the 3D of having it to where not only is it available for those who want to do it mixed media, but you could also, like this one, where I did the regular ship and all you needed to do was paper it excuse me, or you can do it mixed media. I'm going to do that coming up with some houses as well to where they can either be mixed media or they can be done with papers. So that's just a direction and I'm going to try to keep them because not everybody wants to do all the messy mixed media type of stuff. They want to just be able to paper as well. So I'm trying to keep it to where those projects can go either way. As you all know, I try to be as accommodating as possible so that the most number of people can do the projects. But I'm super excited about moving. There's a lot of mixed media out there. There's not as much of it done 3D. So obviously that's the path that I want to go down is, is doing much more uh, 3D mixed media. So hopefully you guys are into that um, coming up and in the future. So. Alrighty, so I wasn't going to show that to you guys, just, I just can't resist, so don't bug me about it, that's all I ask, because I have a, I have made a vow that I'm not going to show stuff till people have an opportunity to, till I have it, I'm not giving people the opportunity to see them until I have it done, and I'm already breaking my rules all over the place, so. <laughs> Alright, Deborah, yeah, go get some sleep. I know you twisted my arm without twisting my arm. I'm so bad. I'm, I'm a bad pet. So. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Again, thank you all so much for joining me here in my studio. Um, it's been fun tripping down memory lane thinking of projects, and um, uh, I, I just, I always appreciate all of you coming and joining me and chatting and talking. I mean, it's not always never know what what subject's going to come up. Um, it's, it's, uh, you never know. It's just, I am what I am. I try not, I try to be real. I try not to be too, uh, too canned, too, so it, it makes it hard sometimes when you're trying to follow on the project and I'm chatty Kathy, but uh, anyway, alrighty guys, we will be back on Friday, um, five o'clock Pacific time and we will be continuing on this and we'll be working on the cover and then next Tuesday a week from yesterday we will do one more page in the album itself I'll try to get more of it done so that the following Friday we will be starting the last of the paper applique um, angels of the elements the water angel so um, I know there's some of you who have been waiting for that one and looking forward to it so we'll get that one started a week from Friday um, that was not up yet, but it will be up um, someday. Sometime this week is what my plan is. Probably closer, more like the weekend. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all once again for all your support. Thank you, um, as always, to both Joy and um, to Lois for helping me out with the um, the. Um, Sorry, just got an email in. Those always throw me off. I don't know why people have to do those when I'm still doing my show. I've tried to keep, and it's about an update. I've tried to keep everybody as updated as possible. I'm doing the best that I can. And so, anyway, um, thank you again to Joy and Lois, and we'll see you on Friday. So, peace out. Love you guys. Punches. Bye for now.